Hi second graders, I've got a new story for us today. It's about a second grade girl who writes her opinion, similar to what we're doing. As we read this story, I want you to notice how her Stella in her class goes through the whole writing process, just like what we're doing in school, and think about how she plans it, how she gets her ideas down, how she edits her work. Think this is the checklist that you were given in your writer's workshop folders. So some of these ideas we'll see that she, in her classroom, also uses. So we'll keep these in mind as we're writing. And then maybe Stella, in her opinion writing, will give you some ideas for when you're writing at home. So Stella Writes an Opinion by Janiel Wagstaff, illustrated by Dana Regan. Try not to have the glare. And I'll read the back, back blurb. Meet Stella. She has lots of opinions, like the best food is ice cream and kids should be allowed to bring toys to school, and Miss Merkley is the nicest teacher in the world. So, when Miss M tells the class they get to write an opinion, Stella gets excited. But how will she choose what to write about? Go with Stella on her journey, on her writing journey, and see how one kid's opinions can change a school. Okay, let's get started. And this book is dedicated for Lil. In my opinion, you're the greatest niece of all. I love you. Okay. Hi, I'm Stella. We do a lot of writing in our class. Today, Miss Merkley said we get to write an opinion. Some of the kids asked, what's that? I say, oh, that's easy. An opinion is what you think about something. It's not what your mom thinks or your dad thinks or your teacher or some other kid thinks. It's what you think. I have so many opinions. Like the best food is ice cream and we should be allowed to bring toys to school. And Miss Merkel, Miss Merkley is the nicest teacher, teacher in the whole world. I don't know how I'll ever choose what to write my opinion about. Felipe and Jenny kind of started whining. Miss Merkley, we don't know what to write about. Maybe you've had that same experience. Can you believe that? All you have to do is think. What do you love? What do you not love? What do you not so love? What bugs you at school or home? What would you change if you were in charge of the world or your class or your bedroom? Stuff like that. Brainstorming. I mean, everybody has opinions. Everybody. And what could be more fun than to write what you think about an important topic? Now that's power. Remember how I said I didn't know how I'd choose what to write about? Well, I helped myself. I made a list, like good writers sometimes do. I listed all the things I love, the things I not so love, what bugs me at school and home, and what I'd change if I were in charge. Then I asked myself, okay, which of these am I really whoopee about? If I was giving a speech to a sold out crowd in my backyard, which ideas would I choose? That made it easy. See, I'm in second grade. In kindergarten and first grade, we got to bring a morning snack if we wanted, you know, to keep us going till lunchtime. Now we can't bring one anymore. More. Now we can't bring one anymore. We're too old. That bugs me. And if I was in charge, it's something I would change. Second graders should be able to bring a morning snack. All right, here she goes developing her opinion. Easy. Done. So this is my opinion. Second graders should be able to bring a morning snack. But wait, Miss Merkley says that isn't enough. I've only stated my topic and what I think about it. You can't just say what you want or what bugs you or what you'd like to change. To write a good opinion, you have to give, you have to have reasons to support it. Reasons. Reason number one, reason number two. Well, most of us kids are pretty good at coming up with reasons. Like when I try to get our moms to let us stay up 10 more minutes at night, who, we can come up with a million reasons for that. For example, one, reading just one book will make us so much smarter. Reading just one more book will make us so much smarter. Two, if we stay up later, we'll be more tired and fall asleep so much faster. Three, ten more minutes in our whole entire lifetimes doesn't really add up too much. Stuff like that. 
Have you ever tried to convince your grown-ups to stay up later? So, reasons. Reasons why second graders should still be able to bring a morning snack. Well, I hate it when my stomach grumbles right in the middle of a spelling or addition. Right in the middle of the spe of spelling or addition. I mean, how can I concentrate on spelling words or grouping 25 with 25 with 20 when my stomach is roaring for attention? I can't. All I can think about is, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So there's a reason. Snacks make me smarter. Smarter because I can work harder on that spelling or addition instead of worrying about my poor old tummy. I'm hungry. Oh, I just thought of another reason. I get grumpy when I'm hungry. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. I mean grumpy like snappy at my friends or classmate. Don't touch that. I know, I know. Stop making that noise. They call me low, they call this low blood sugar. Does that ever happen to you? It happens to me. When you eat, you feel more like your usual self. I like to get back to my usual self as soon as possible, and a snack does the trick. After all, most people adore the usual me. I think those are good reasons to bring back morning snack, don't you? So I have my topic. I stated my opinion and my reasons for that opinion. Pretty good stuff. Miss, Miss Merkley says there's one more thing. Writers need to bring things to an end, like they do with stories. So we need to have a closing for our opinion. You know, like if you were giving a speech, you'd say something wise or funny that sums up your best ideas so that people re will remember them. This way, everyone knows what knows you're done and can give you a standing ovation. Closing. Standing ovation, where everybody stands up and claps for your ideas or your thoughts because they're so great. Hmm, this part's not so easy. I'll try a couple of different endings on paper to see what I can do. To sum up, snacks are needed now. Hungry stomachs turn second graders' brains to mush. I guess that's a little dramatic. How about this? As you can see, morning snack is a good idea for growing second graders. Th that one doesn't quite sound like me. She's doing many different endings. See which one's the best. Sometimes I have to sit and think for a while. Sometimes I leave my writing and come back to it later. Aha. Uh -huh. To conclude. Nice transition. To conclude, morning snacks are important. We should bring them back for second graders. When our stomachs are happy, we're happy kids who can learn better because we can concentrate. And that's what school is all about. Yes. I like that one. It sounds like me and it reminds everyone why my opinion deserves attention. I'm glad I tried writing a few different endings or I never would have come up with that one. I think I'm done. But I'll do what good writers do. I'll read it over a few times to make sure it says what I want it to say and sounds like, and sounds like I want it to sound. Or she's going back and editing. All right, here's her writing. Nice, neat writing. Second graders should be able to bring a morning snack. First, we get hungry way before lunchtime. If we're hungry, it's hard to concentrate on spelling or math. It's much easier to spell words and add numbers when our tummies are full. Snack will help us work harder and get smarter. Second, we need snacks because some of us get low blood sugar. That makes us grumpy. We don't want to snap at our friends, and snacks help us to be our usual selves. Less fighting, more sharing. Our class gets along much better that way. To conclude, morning snacks are important. We should bring them back for second graders. When our, snack, when our stomachs are happy, we're happy kids who can learn better because we can concentrate, and that's what school is all about. I made a few changes. Can you find them? So here comes her second draft. And this is what good writers do. They go back and they edit. Second graders should be able to bring morning snacks. Here's why. First, we get hungry way before lunchtime. If we're hungry, it's hard to concentrate on spelling or math. It's much easier to spell words and add numbers when our tummies aren't grumbling. 
Snacks will help us work harder and get smarter. Second, we need snacks because some of us get low blood sugar when we haven't eaten in a while. This makes us grumpy. We don't want to snap at our friends, and snacks can help us be our usual sweet selves. Less fighting, more sharing. Our class gets along much better that way. To conclude, morning snacks are important. We should bring them back for second graders. When our stomachs are happy, we're happy kids who can learn better because we can because we can concentrate, and that's what school is all about. Did you notice some of the edits Stella made to her writing? Two weeks later. Guess what? Miss Merkley read my opinion and thought I had some really good points. I guess there are a few other hungry, grumpy pants people in our class besides me. She said she wanted to show my paper to the principal, so we went down together, fix so we went down together and fixed the misspellings. Sorry, I'm gonna read that again. S she said she wanted to show my paper to the principal, so we sat down together and fixed the misspell the misspellings. Once he read it, he agreed. Morning snack every week. See, I told you opinions were powerful. Who knows what we opinion writers might change? The world needs us. Okay, so as you're doing your opinion writing at home, think about what the process is that Stella went through and how she changed her work and edited it. And um, we can't wait to see your writing.